Welcome, my name is uh, Rolof Hellemans. I am the General Secretary of the Maas Alliance and I will tell you today more about Maas and what it's all about. First of all, the definition. Um, there are many definitions about mobility as a service or mobility on demand or transit on demand. And to be very easy on this, it's all about how do we organize the trip, 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 planning, trip planning from A to B. Uh, a little bit more the definitions which we are working on right now. How do we manage the equity of supply and demand? So the optimizations of the support, uh, the optimizations of all the elements that we are offering to the market in combination of the services that are, are needed and required for the market. What we, from a mass alliance point of view, try to achieve is freedom to choose and freedom to move. So all elements of mobility that are offered throughout mass are services that are offered for all and the accessibility for that is very low so all users can use it um, another one is why do we really want to achieve this one is is interoperability interoperability between all mobility modes and interoperability to make sure that we can reach out to the user and uh, make the service happy for them so it's also something where mass is, 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 is critical of is we don't only do it for the future the past or the current, we, we need to make sure that a customer is in control of his on his trip. And being in control meaning I want to know what I've done and what I traveled. If there's something wrong or if there's something uh, not as planned, I want to change it. So what are my current information to change it now? And if I wanted to go somewhere tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, what are my options to choose from and I can make a reservation. So the time scale within mass is very important because you always want to be in control. Freedom to travel. And this definition is, is, is why, but why this is came from. And, and, and to tell you a little bit more about the cycles of mass, it is a, it's an easy story. Um, introduced in 2015 in our case, then uh, the mass line started and with the creation of mass lines, we really discussed about wording and framing. We talked a lot about what's mass, what can mass do for us, where how do we implement it? Where are the white stakeholders and when are we happy? So the achievements and the goals of mass were set very high. It was the golden nuts where we all were working on, which is fair. But at the end, we saw that it was growing and we saw that many, many good products were uh, aligned and deployed, but it was not that of an impact that we all wished for. We were just starting to go there. We were just starting to upscale mass. And uh, by upscaling mass, uh, it means we were getting more and more in control of what the technique could provide us and what, is, what the end users would need. But there COVID came around the corner and we saw that um, the need of mass was changing rapidly. So instead of opening an open free service for everybody, we had to inform all the customers where it was safe to travel, what options there were in such a way that you could really see if it's busy or not. So we had a rescheduling and not only in services and required services, but also in budget. So we saw that the deployment of mass was backing up. And then we were in, in, in this phase where we are right now, and hopefully COVID will stay away. If not, there is something we need to decide together. And that's how do we want to go forward with mass? Um, as it is right now, we can do some projects and it will work for cities. That's great. But then we will still deploy without really alignment and really the, uh, and not really have the focus which we want to go for. And that's a creating of a better world. So if we really want to do this, we have to go for a improvement to reach the potential benefits. And potential benefits meaning our common goals and environmental friendly future for our kids. To do so, let's align, let's collaborate to see where we can go. And that's the yellow line we are trying to focus with, not only uh, cities, not only regions, not only countries, but most important, we try to achieve this with the European Commission and the global world because it's a global issue and we try to tackle this. So how do we improve a system in which we can provide solutions for everybody in the world to make the right decision how to drive from A to B? That's what we try to do. And an overall vision of the mass and the mass line from the mass line's point of view and this is a um, critical one because we really want to focus on creating an open mass ecosystem. This open mass ecosystem means it's open for everybody to join and to connect. And ecosystem is working and not only getting the information, but also achieving information. So it's working, collaborating together 
to improve a system or to improve a city or to improve the service to an end user. That's what, from our point of view, the open mass ecosystem should stand for. Open for everybody to inter, uh, integrate, to improve. And if you want to improve, it also means that there is something, uh, some authority you want to provide the tools to, to make this improvement. For example, a public authority. If we want to improve accessibility or change accessibility of a city, or we want to change the, the way that we travel so we can increase the livability of cities, we need to have some regulations that are able to make this change. So what steering wheel can we provide a public authority to make this change? Another one, because it's not only public authority, it's also the mobility provider offering the mobility service. What can a mobility service do to influence accessibility and liveability? And this is all about the user-centric approach. The user meaning the end user, meaning it's a citizen, it's a guest of a city, or it's a employee who's working in the city, or a guest who's going to the employee, but all the end users who have to go to this final destination called a city, or the beginning of a trip going to the other direction, but just the original destination and the final destination. And to make sure that everybody is aware of the planning tools on the information, how you can go from A to B, it's very important to understand what the information is that you can choose from. So within the planning tool, all mobility options should be applicable and available. Once they are there, then you can use the book, you can use the service and you can pay. This is this one. But there is one big important element that we are missing because it's a user-centric approach. And um, user-centric approach means we do this for the user. So how do we really make a satisfied user to make sure that the proposition is working for his, uh, for his own good, for his own need. So if I am a end user and I'm traveling in a city, it should be based, every proposition should be based on the price, meaning how expensive is it or how cheap is it? Or the time, how long do I take to go from A to B or how quick? Or do I have to wait? Or do I have to transfer a lot of times? Or do I have to transfer between modes? Uh, that's the convenience. Can I just sit and, and, and relax until I'm at my final destination? Do I have to change and change and change? And I think it's getting more and more important that we also have to look at the environmental impact or the sustainability impact of a mode that you can choose. So those four elements are key to make the right proposition for an end user to choose from. And the good thing is those four elements are also part of the proposition in which you can uh, if, in which you can use the public authority and the mobility provider to combine this, to make sure that they're doing something that's better for the city, so it's also good either for the end user as a single uh, single truth or a single opportunity to go to another way that is better for the city. So that's the balance we're trying to look, and that's what we're trying to achieve with an open mass ecosystem. And to, uh, to get to this level and to get to this goal, it's also important to see what kind of mass levels there are. And that's a little bit of a theory, but we have to go through it because then you really understand it. Um, level zero, meaning there is no integration at all. That's the most easy part. Then you will have a, a trip planner saying you can go from A to B by, ba by bike, by bus, by train, next to a other, just information and good luck. The next one is we want to have a little bit more integration of information. So we still have option A, B and C but we want to pro provide them as one service. And if this is one service, you know what the, what the final destination time is or what the, what the time is for your arrival at your final destination. So you can choose and also you can compare that from a money point of view. So there's an integration of the bare information that's required. The next one is with this information, uh, it's not only information, it's also something you can book. So you can uh, see what's available, you can choose, but you can only choose this part, this part, and this part, and in the end you need to pay this, this, and that. So it's not combined, it's not integrated, it's just information you can book for a single point of in your travel. And the third one is getting more and more interesting because then you have one trip with multiple uh, elements in between, and these multiple elements you can use, but they were being paid by one integration layer. So there is only one, uh, so one interface for the user to react to and they will do the payment and they will do the settlement. So that's easy for the user. But we are not there yet because the real world challenge is going to be on level four, meaning we want to play with the proposition in such a way 
that the policies can work, that the city can work, that we can improve accessibility and livability, but we can still provide a solution for an end user. So that's the highly integrated complex theory of how do we make the right proposition for an end user and how do we make this proposition with all the partners in, uh, who are working on this. And that's the open mass ecosystem. Having said that, there's an open mass ecosystem. And that's something else than the winner takes it all, or is it a system or an API? It's, it's, it's never going to be the winner takes it all. There, is, there are no winners. There can only be losers if we not, don't do it right. And there's one big loser, and that's the future generation. So we have to do it together, and we have to do it now. So it's not about the winner. It's about how do we make sure that we can offer the right proposition from all elements, from all transport operators. So sharing, learning making sure that we are dealing with profitable um, uh, public-private combinations because we are there for each other with each other to make uh, sustainable cities and happy end users not we are here there to make a lot of money from out of those cities because then we were we are were sucking in something dry and at the end there will be nothing so how can we align work together on making the right proposition in such a way that we can continue on our business as well so it's not either this or this, it's end and throughout one ecosystem. And that's what we try to do with uh, the open mass ecosystem. Everybody is allowed to connect to a license to operate. I need to tell you that because the license to operate is very important. So you know what you can expect from a city. And a city can also, uh, um, can also steer from their point on your expectations to the mobility provider back to the end. So that's the combination how we can start using. I will tell you a little bit more about this one because it's the output of mass. And this is what we just refer to as the output of mass is a framework, a framework to operate, meaning how do we share? How do we find the find agreements and how do we make this happen? And there are many, many authorities who are working on this, not only about uh, standardization or um, uh, rules or it's, it's all about what do we really want to achieve with each other? So from the left-hand side, public authorities, our role is to make an open, fair market for everybody from a community point of view, connecting on data, connecting on models from a region point of view to have access on how do you want to travel to within cities? How can we directly influence and steer the end users? And that's on the other hand side, we have these shared assets and owned assets, or to be more specific, this is what we drive in because it's our car, our bike, our um, moped, or we use it. And from here, we can see how we can make the right proposition to shift from a owned asset to a shared asset. And that's the major shift we are looking for, from using an owned asset to a shared asset. And to do so, we, are setting up the orchestrating layer to provide with all the stakeholders the direct proposition to the end users. That's what we are trying to achieve within this model. It's benefits not only for B2B, but also for the C, because that's our end user. And I, I get a lot of discussions and questions about, but what is really the influence and what can we really do to make this change and to, to be more uh, specific, this is the hardest part. The B2B2C discussion is, is, is the complete open ecosystem, but the B2C discussion, the proposition, is the hardest part because we want to make sure that an end user has got something to choose. But we also want to make sure that our businesses are running and we can maintain doing our business. So to do so, it's a user interface. How easy can we make the interface to the end user so we can communicate. Once we can communicate and he understands it and he trusts us, that's an important one, then we can really work on the proposition based on the price, time, convenience, and environmental impact. But when is something important for who? So who is the customer? Uh, who is starting this journey? Who is making the call? And what are his needs? And what are our personal needs? If I don't have a car, then some things will automatically not be offered. But if I am a, a heavy user of uh, bikes, that's something we can always offer. So what can we learn? That's one thing. That's something we are really keen to, to make sure that we can learn from a city. And with this learning environment, we want to give it back to other cities to make sure that we can compare. 
And if there is a learning, then we also should work on and what's working for the end user. So if there is a proposition we can provide the end user with, is it working? If we are saying that um, cars are uh, only drifting and only allowed to go to the lie to the left, are they going to do it? Or do we need another element or another an input, impulse input to make them go to the left instead of asking them to, to the left? Let me rephrase that one because that's a difficult. Every proposition should work and we should know what the elicity is of this proposition. Why are people going from A to B? If they're going from A to B, when do they want to change going from A to B to go from A to C? Is this on time, customer experience, money, or yes, environmental impact because that's getting more and more active mode. Um, this is what we're going to play with for the coming five years. So we want to provide the information knowledge center to, to learn and provide the information to the citizens and to the citizens to get this working. Uh, this is hard, but we will manage this because this is what we are here for. This provides you an input of mass and what mass can do. I hope that you got a better understanding of the possibilities and the options about mass, but most of all, why we should collaborate and work together. Thank you very much and enjoy your further uh, explanations within Solutions Plus. Thanks.